Welcome to the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke, a show about ancient coins from the viewpoint of a seasoned professional with nearly 30 years experience. Here's Aaron Burke and Mike Nottleman on the Ancient Coin Podcast. And with the gong, it begins. So, um, welcome to the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke. I'm Mike Nottleman. He's Aaron Burke. Um, this is our first show. So, you know, before we get started, I want to take care of a little, you know, housekeeping, I guess, uh, and tell you a little bit about us and me and him and a little about what we're going to do. So my name is Mike Nottleman. I am a U.S. numismatist at Harlan J. Burke Limited in Chicago. Um, I am also a writer and a researcher, uh, but I truthfully know almost nothing about numis about uh, ancient numismatics. So this will be an interesting uh, this will be an interesting adventure for me. Uh, I do though know about podcasting, and I do have another project called the Coin Show Podcast, which I do with Matt Dinger, uh, and have been doing for about eleven years. Matt's awesome; it's a really good time. I also have a deep curiosity for almost everything numismatic, and so uh, I was hoping when I started a couple of years ago at Harlan J. Burke that I would get the opportunity to learn about ancient coins, and so this podcast is going to be my way of sharing the journey uh, with, you know, the people that want to just tag along for the ride. So, you know, if you're here for that, I, I say welcome and, and join in. Uh, so, if you, like me, know nothing about ancient coins, settle in. If you happen to be an expert in ancient coins, then, you know, fear not. This podcast is going to cover recent auction news. Uh, it's going to cover values, trends, and advice, as well as, you know, how to maximize your, your purchase dollars. And, uh, you know, there's really something for everybody in between. So uh, here to be my mentor and my guide along the way is Aaron Burke. He has spent his life studying and selling ancient coins. His father, Harlan J. Burke, is a well-known numismatist and author of The 100 Greatest Ancient Coins by Whitman and has been in business under his own name since 1964, making his firm one of the oldest firms in the United States, handling uh, all areas of, num of numismatics. <laughs> And he's my co my co host, my co worker, and a generally great guy. Please welcome Aaron Burke. Thanks, Mike. Uh, did you get that all out there? I don't know. I was, I, man, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Might have been the Thanksgiving turkey still stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's plenty of that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to do this show with Mike. Uh, Mike and I have been talking about this show for about a year actually and uh, it took a while for us to kind of come up with all the ideas that we wanted to cover and how we wanted to handle it but here we are with the first show so really excited about it and uh you know i'm going to talk about the new segment first and the new segment even though it's talking about current auctions and it's talking about some advanced coinage there's something to learn all the way across the board with any of this show really yeah no, I mean, for even each uh, news episode, is, as we've kind of gone through the stories, you know, in between the two of us, I've already latched onto a few things. So it's it's going to be cool, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So let's, let's get right to it. So um, it's auction season, and so uh, I'm going to talk about four auctions in particular that happened in Europe that were pretty big sales and uh, definitely worth looking at in the future if you're into ancient coins. They were the Gorney and Mosh sale, the Loy Numismatic sale, the NGSA sale, and the NAC sale. So first, let's get into it with the Gorney and Mosh sale. Their sale was October 11th. They had a great sale. They hadn't had good sales for the last couple of years, but this was a fantastic sale. And the reason why was because there was 24 plate coins, and a plate coin is a um, means that it was uh, it's referenced in a old reference catalog or an auction catalog. Um, and in this case, uh, there was 24 plate coins from the Hermer Cray Greek coins book. And Mike will bring you up a copy of it. And very importantly, <clears throat> so to be referenced, he's talking about to be photographed and actually shown. Right. 
Correct. So this co- this book came out in 1966, which means that all the coins that are in this book are pre-1970 pedigree, which means that they can be bought and sold by museums, institutions. They can be taken as donations. Um, and that was part of the UNESCO Treaty from 1970. We'll get into a whole show about rules and regulations, but just know that anything in ancient coins pre-1970 means that they're going to increase in value sometimes two, three, four, five times its normal uh, price because they're sought after. And they're legal to own. And they're legal to own. Well, all coins are legal to own. It's a matter of what can flow in and out of countries. Mm. And so in this case, um, and what museums can actually acquire, because if you build a million dollar or $2 million coin collection and you want to donate it to the museum in your town, if it's not pre-1970 by law, the museums aren't allowed to take it. So a lot of these collectors of those means are buying things only pre-1970 so that they can actually um, have something completely legal as far as moving in and out of locations, um, as well as being able to donate it to a museum if they want to later. So um, in this case, the Gourney Mosh sale had these 24, at least 24 play coins, but there was a lot of coins that were pedigree before 1970. And I saw people paying three, four, ten times what coins were worth just to have a Hermer Cray play coin pedigree. Well, I mean, the coin came, or the book came out in 1966. So, you know, the, these coins, the pedigreed coins in these are like the famous coins of ancient coins. Right. Exactly. Um, so, you know, Gourney Mosh is always a great auction house to look at, and they usually have auctions in the spring and fall like a lot of these auction houses do. Uh, moving on to the Loy sale, and I'm going to discuss uh, kind of one coin in particular, and it is the Catania uh, coin, um, which was lot number uh, 20 in the sale. And uh, I targeted this with a client. Now, when I'm talking about targeting coins, I discuss these with uh, specific buyers and talking about, um, sorry, I had to move my cat off. <laughs> Beeline show here too. Um, everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to be a star. So I targeted this coin with my client um, because it had a pre-1970 uh, act- uh, pedigree. It actually goes back to 1935, and it was also part of the um, of the Jolay, um collection, which is Jalei Razors. He had a famous, very famous collection as well. And so um, it really, uh, when we talk about coins from Sicily and the different cities that were under Sicily, um, it's always head side is not traditional like it is for U.S. coins with the U.S. coins being head side first, heads tails. And here the quadriga is or the chariot side is the obverse of the coin. And the reverse in this case is the Apollo head with the laurel wreath. Um, so this you know, is this is typical of, of Sicilian coins to be back to be the opposite way like this. Yes, okay. yes. And in fact, I always have trouble with my photographers because they always flip them. <laughs> and so I'm constantly, before a catalog goes up online, I have to flip the obverse and reverses all the time. They never quite get that right. <laughs> so this is a new vocabulary alert. We have a quadriga, which is the chariot. Yes. We have a Nike, which is the, the angel that is, that is crowning the horses in victory. Right. And you know why they're doing it? You know why that why that Nike is crowning the horse? Because uh, they're big winners, right? They won the race. And the Greeks were extremely, it was extremely important, these horse races. And in fact, going back to the time of Philip II, the father of Alexander the Great, he was Macedonian. And he actually won a race in Greece to elevate himself to being a god. And uh, that helped solidify the Greeks later for Alexander the Great. For them to go and conquer the world that's amazing that you know i mean well first off that the that the greeks were into chariot racing the way that they were it's it's what is always depicted in all the movies right ben-hur all that kind of stuff but right but it was so important to them that they decided they're gods based on who wins chariot one, races one 100 so uh this particular coin just the thinking was i was going to go to twenty thousand hammer i got it for sixteen thousand. i thought that was a great deal um, and I have the original catalog from 1935, 
And back then, it sold for 900 hammer Swiss francs. I believe it was Swiss francs. And so that was like one of the higher price coins in the sale in 1935. So the fact that in 1935, they thought this was a great coin as well. Some people might think, oh, well, the part of the charioteer on the obverse is off, off the flan. Um, but uh, I really thought the Apollo side was stellar. And, uh, and so I could, you know, you have to make a decision on buying ancient coins, what you're going to give up. Um, it's not often you're going to have perfect on both sides, and there's always something to actually think about with ancient coins. It's not so cut and dry, um, and the pedigree made a huge difference in this particular uh, purchase. Now, here's something that I find really, really interesting. This. So you say that this coin last came for sale in the 1930s. N no, it was actually, or it it's, was it's gone through a few, few people. Okay. So yeah, the oldest this, pedigree is 35. It actually even sold in 1974, and it probably came up. Uh, that was probably the last time it came up was in 1974. Okay, well, there helps my point, though. In 1974, so it has been 50 years since this coin has come up for sale. 100%. So, you know, there is something in, in explaining why some of these coins go for the money that they do. Right, because they and we'll get into uh, my. We'll get into other reasons why that's important um, later in the segment. Um, but uh, I want to move on um, onto the NGSA sale, which was on November fifteenth, and we're going to talk about one coin in particular, but three auctions that are all we're all offering the same coin, and it's the Panticapan Stator, which is minted in the Black Sea, and you have a, a Sator on the obverse, and you have a Griffin on the reverse, and this in this particular issue is in gold. Quite a few of these have been coming up on the market, and um, C and G had one last year as well as uh, Heritage. Uh, Roma had one that just came up as well. Um, my client really wanted the NGSA one. The problem with it was, in my opinion, was they were starting it out at 200,000 Swiss francs. The last one sold for 75,000 pounds hammer. So far less than 200,000. How long um, ago? When, uh, well, that sold um, uh, in October. October or November, That's so um, so not long ago. Period. Yeah, um, the uh, CNG one sold for two hundred thousand, um, but that was because uh, there was a minimum by the owner of the piece. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't have sold for that. Um, and the Heritage one sold for one hundred and fifteen or one hundred and twenty, and I was the underbidder on the coin. So I told my client um, there was one coming up in NAC, which I didn't care for, but there was a better one coming up in Nomos, um, which has, actually hasn't come up yet. It's coming up this Tuesday, but it had a pedigree. Uh, and so he still wanted to target the NGSA one, but we had a limit in mind. And, and if you see, it sold for 260,000 hammer. Um, we wrote it to about 250 and my client said to me, he was on the phone with me and actually said, should we just go after the Nomos one? And I was already trying to talk him into that. And I said, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, he walked into the decision that you wanted him to make in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. Now the NAC one ended up getting pulled and we'll bring that one up. That's a lot 126. Okay. Um, and uh, it, it got withdrawn, which means that uh, it was probably condemned as fake. Um, it could have been for uh, some other reason, but that's generally the case. And NAC did the right thing by pulling it um, because you don't want to have an auction record. Even if some auction houses will buy in a coin um, that's fake because they don't want to show that they had a fake in their sale. So they just buy it in to protect themselves. But that's really dangerous to do that because then you're showing an auction record for a fake coin and you don't want to do that. And so they did the right thing by pulling it. Uh, I wasn't targeting it anyway, but it just made the pedigree of the Nomos coin, which Mike, if you want to bring that up, it's lot 48 that's coming up. That one um, has a pedigree going all the way back to 1934. And it was actually bought by Herbert Kahn, who was the premier uh, numismatist back in the 30s. So it, it has a long pedigree. Um, it's a very nice coin and uh, definitely worth going after more so than some of these other coins that have been coming up. So when you think of representing clients in auction, you really have to think about the market as a whole and realize that there's going to be more coins coming up. 
And uh, and if it's a coin that's been coming up on a regular basis, you have to decide the best, uh, uh, you know, your best offense essentially, and to put yourself into the perfect coin at the right price in the right market. So strategy, Jeff, definitely comes into the buying of these coins. 100%. And if you don't have a dealer who's going to tell you all the nuances of things coming up and backstories, uh, you won't know as an individual. And I hear stories uh, behind the scenes that no one else hears. So, um, and that's just from being involved with all the players in this in the sandbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys all play in the same sandbox, I'm sure you know the same stories we do we do so uh let's move on again and we're going to go to the nac auction again uh they did have a great coin now nac is a wonderful auction house and uh this coin lot 44 um is part of they did three catalogs two for ancient coins one for world um the first catalog which this was part of was part of the sheikh of qatar um who actually was um destroying the greek market ancient Greek market in around 2010, 11, somewhere in that range, 2012, and was outbidding everybody and paying inflated prices. And then he passed away and now the coins are being sold by NAC over several auction catalogs over the next few years. Uh, but it looks like so, this one has an equally ridiculous price on it. Yeah, it does. So, you know, on this coin, um, I was willing to go to 35. I stretched to 42 and won the coin. The reason was is because there was one in the Loy sale that we were also targeting that sold for 80,000 hammer, and I was the underbidder at 75. And I ended up not wanting the coin, really, um, but pushed it. And knowing that my client wanted this coin and the fact that this one had also a great pedigree back to 1905. And so, um, and it was also a signed die. It has KA, which is one of the artists. They don't know what, what that artist's name is. Most of the time, it's Uenitos and Kimon on these particular coins. But uh, uh, this is just KA, and they're not sure who the artist is necessarily. Um, but uh, so I didn't mind stretching a little bit more on this coin because uh, because of the pedigree, it'll always have great upside. So the KA on this is the signature, and it's found just behind the head. In yeah. the in the empty space behind, the the strike on this coin is just just fantastic. I mean, it's really deep and really uh, the relief is really high. You see a lot of detail in it, like uh, like the earrings and uh, Hercules. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just it's a really really cool looking coin. Yeah, and if you don't know, that's Hercules fighting the Nemean lion. So uh, he had 10 labors, or is it 12 labors? I always forget. And uh, But in the first labor, he uh, he killed the Nemean lion and then wore his lion skin throughout the rest of the labors. And so um, a lot of times the uh, face of Hercules is not so clear, and here it's pretty clear. Um, a lot of times these are struck with rusty dyes because this is a ceremonial coinage. And so they actually brought the dies out later after they had rusted. And I can get into that later with coins of uh, the decadrams of you, of you, you went to toast and chemo. But uh, this one actually um, surfaces are pretty good overall. And the pedigree was fantastic to boot. Cool. So um, I'm not going to get into uh, too much about the Nomo sale coming up, other than say the sale that the Nomo sale is coming up on the 30th. That was part of the, has the Pantacapayan in it. It's worth looking at if you haven't had a chance. Um, but uh, I'm not going to talk about it too much. Maybe after the sale, we'll talk about all the coins I won <laughs> for my clients. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can talk about your track record and how you did. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, our, our new feature. Oh, wait. No, we forgot about the doofus. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So now we're going to move on to our oh. new feature of the doofus coin buy. And, uh, so, so tell us why does, why does this Macedon stick out as our doofus of the, of the episode? Okay. So this is normally was a $500 coin. Um, they're as common as dirt and, uh, there has been a couple of coins that have come up recently that have sold for 2,500, which is really, really strong for this coin. But the features on the obverse are much tighter than this one. This is a uh, more common die type work that you can find anywhere. And so, um, 
I actually had one I sold for 2500 because the die was so nice, but it wasn't this. Um, this sold for almost with the juice and the and the buyer's fees probably over sixty five hundred dollars maybe seven thousand dollars that's a ridiculous price for what a coin that used to be five hundred bucks um, and my uh, the the thing I want to really stress is and I do this with most of my clients is don't buy common coins in auction it makes no sense whatsoever okay hold on a second because we got to write that one down Aaron's rule one don't buy common coins at auction and that is that is wisdom and i think that's true for any type of coinage or anything you're collecting if you can find a dealer stock which you will eventually you won't pay the premium you won't pay the buyer's fees you won't pay the exchange rates if it's in europe it just doesn't make sense and in this case you have two people who don't know anything about ancient coins that were obviously fighting over this and it went for a ridiculous price to the point where i actually had discussions with other season collectors and dealers who were all like why <laughs> well uh, okay so and and here's what i want to kind of point out about this is that your problem with this is not the coin it's it's not what the coin is it's not what the denomination is it's none of that it's this particular example is just not a particularly good example of this coin and has been elevated somehow by bringing this just ridiculous number it's a it's a nice coin for the type, but it's not the the best die possible for the type. Put it that way. Okay, and so therefore, completely overpriced now, and now has an auction record to back up that that overpriced. Right, and hopefully it's just uh, anomaly, and it won't happen again. Um, and generally, that's the case with these types of things. But uh, it, it only goes to show that you should have a dealer looking and advising you on what you should be doing. Because here was a situation where two people who didn't know what they were doing really screwed up, in my opinion. Yeah, and they cost themselves a lot of money. Right. And maybe money doesn't matter to them, but uh, it, it, it's just silly. It's just silly when it comes right down to it. So, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it now because, uh, Mike, we're going to talk about collecting ancient coins. Yes, we are. So, uh so tell us, um, Aaron, uh, let's see, this, this episode we have learned, we've learned vocabulary, we have learned, um, we've learned a pearl of wisdom, do not buy common coins at auction. So when I think about things, um, I always want to break it down. I mean, I, I really want to break things down. So, you know, with U.S. coins, you start with, uh, okay, you got 17th or 18th century coins, 19th century coins, 20th century coins. With, uh, with, with ancient coins, you have the Romans, the Greeks, the Byzantines. But that's not really how you prefer to break it down. Well, I find that most clients are pretty overwhelmed when they start. And so the first thing I tell them is don't buy, don't make a, a purchase right away make a decision by studying um, and reading a little bit and s decide what area you want to collect first. A lot of people start out with Roman because they know the 12 Caesars and they know Nero and Augustus and Julius Caesar. And then they realize, wow, Greek coins, they're beautiful. And they end up moving into Greek coins. It happens all the time. And so then they come back to me a month later or two months or six months later and they say, eh, that first purchase I shouldn't have made. So can you sell this for me? I want to get into other another area. And so I, again, I always say, wait, I don't have a problem telling a client that. The other thing we have to talk about is, do you want to buy for quality or do you want to buy for quantity? And when you're buying for quantity, unless you're buying, unless you have all the money in the world and you're buying tons of great quality coins um most quantity buyers don't care about quality they just want to buy as many coins as they can get and so don't expect to have those coins sell for great money when you go to sell them if you buy great quality generally auction houses and dealers alike will want to have those coins and they'll work at um, a premium for you to make sure that they can actually handle those. So, um, you know, study, uh, make sure that you have a good dealer like myself or anybody who has a good track record 
um i would say um you know then there's the whole slabbing versus non-slabbing yeah i was gonna say because it's like most people if you stumble into us coins and you buy slabbed coins you generally will be okay you won't hurt yourself too badly that is absolutely not the case in ancients no no because in ancient coins no one buy no one's ever bought an ancient coin based on grade alone in fact that's just one of the last things i ever think about because grading is very subjective and so there's some companies that will always overgrade and there's some companies that will undergrade and so you really i would just you know i never go into an auction saying well what did they grade it that's probably the last thing i look at because i have my own experience i have my own grading scale for myself and so um why would i pay a premium because ngc put a star on it or put a five out of five you know it may they may have put a five out of five five out of five star on a stellar coin that has a crappy die because there was a bad die cutter and so i wouldn't pay a premium for that coin and i guarantee you there are dealers out there trying to get ancient raw coins into holders with stars in the hope that they can then put it into an auction house like heritage or one of these other companies that you know have buyers looking for those types of starred coins um and paying you know three four ten times what the coin is worth uh you know i understand that you know there are dealers out there that want to maximize dollar value i won't do it i just won't do it um i when i sell coins i sell market and you have to understand that you know slabbing is really an american phenomenon and it's following the u.s market and it's very difficult to get ancient coins that have been produced over 1800 years all coming out of the ground all cleaned differently all with different uh quality of dyes uh individually struck to get something that's standard you know um mike when you look at slabbed ancients there's gray sheets there's gray sheets for the for you mean when i look at slabbed us yeah yeah there's gray sheets no absolutely i have a price there's no gray I, sheets for ancients you know one of the things i have to i have to say and to, and to your credit um one of the things that that has been impressed upon me in the way that we do business at Burke is that we are not interested in selling you a coin once. You know, it's about developing 100%. relationships. It is about being long-term partners and in trying to help you, you know, to really create the collection that you want. And it's a different philosophy. It's like, there are a lot of coin shops out there and there are a lot of places where you can get advice. But the real question becomes is, you know, is this guy going to stand next to you as you build your collection? Is this guy going to help you out and help you to build that collection and help you to maximize your dollars, you know, so that when you when you have that collection and honestly, when you pass, you know, there's going to be something there. There's going to be something for your heirs to inherit and something for for, uh, you know, for for them to 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 have. Yeah, I mean, we've like Mike said. I mean, we, you said we've we've never. I've never put problem coins into my. If, if a if a collector says comes to me and says, "Aaron, build me a collection. Help me build. You know, curate my collection. I'm going to curate it like it's my own. I'm going to spend every dollar like it's mine. And I want to be able to be proud of that collection when it comes back to me. I don't want to have that collection come back to me and say, "Oh, yeah, that was a problem I sold to them. That was a problem I sold to them. This is a problem I sold to them." How am I going to make this go away? You know, I don't want to have that happen. Yeah, I there's sold no way. That. I sold them that collection. No, I don't really want it back. You know, that kind of thing. No, it's always, right. you know, if we sold it to people, we definitely want it back. Right. And be and being a great dealer means that you sometimes handle the same coin two, three, four times. Mm -hmm. Because none of us are owners of this material. We're just, uh, we're, what's that? Custodians. Yeah, yeah, we're short-term um, owners of these things. They're going to last a lot longer than us. I had actually a collector once tell me the only way that you can actually say that you really own the coin and you're the last owner of the coin is if you destroy the coin. Yeah, then you're the last owner of the coin. And then you're a bad person in my book. One hundred percent.
<laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. Quick recap: we have uh, we've learned vocabulary. We have learned uh, uh, new denominations. We uh, we saw the auction scene, even though we may or may not have seen the links to it, and uh, uh, we learned about you know how you select a dealer and how you help uh, determine how you build a collection. Yeah, we have one more name play though to go. Wow! So there is still yet something to be packed into this episode. So uh, this is a game that that Aaron likes to play, and it's called name play. And uh, if you pay attention to our Facebook group, so our Facebook group is uh, at uh, Ancient Coin Podcast. If, if you go to groups and you search for groups, find the Ancient Coin Podcast group, you'll see us. And pretty much every day I try and put up some word that I have a hard time saying, which is easy for me to find in, in that. And so uh, this is, uh, today is Antoninianus. Antoninianus, or, or the plural is Antoniniani, and that was first introduced by Caracol in 215 AD. It's a silver coin that was later debased and comes down to base metal um, as the Roman Emperor Empire was de debasing their silver coins. So, uh, important fact is that Antoninianus was not an emperor. He, it is a denomination. Antoniniani is multiples of that coin. Not him and right. his family. Yeah, you're thinking of Antonius Pius. Okay. Antoni Anton is it Antonius? Antonius okay. Pius. Antonius Pius. Okay. Yeah. 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 Don't say that ten times fast. No, I can't even say it one time slow. <laughs> All right. So um so yeah, so that's our, our uh that's that's our, our wordplay for today. So, That's our show for today, almost. I think. Yeah, I think so, man. I just like. So, <laughs> if if you want to see more of this, uh, go to our Facebook page. You go to groups on Facebook and look up the Ancient Coin Podcast or Ancient Coin Podcast, and you'll find our private group there. You can sign up. You can join our group. We're we're all there like one big happy family, discussing everything that you know we like to talk about. I'll put up uh, posts every day with a little bit of content. Uh, you can see the you will see these episodes in that group, okay, and also uh, on YouTube. Eventually, we're going to get to live after we work out some of the bugs, um, you know, like we've had this week. Um, and with this week's episode, I will post the links to the auction pages in the description so that you can go and you can look at the links and at the pages uh, that Aaron was talking about. Uh, you got anything else for us, Aaron? Uh, the only thing I would say is that I, I also have been posting on that Facebook group and I've been posting about um, shows that I've gone to and some other uh, numismatic news um, from my perspective. So, uh, you know, you'll find some other interesting things in there as well. Cool. So, uh, all right. So um, for Aaron Burke, I'm Mike Nottleman. We'll catch you next time on the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke. Thanks, Thanks for guys. listening to the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke. We'll return with another episode soon. Meantime, you can join our private group on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com and search the Groups tab for Ancient Coin Podcast Discussion Group and ask to join. There you can become part of our community, where we share and discuss ancient coins as well as the show, the ancient coin market, auctions, or just to give our own opinions on things in order to learn together. Join Aaron and Mike again soon for the next episode of the Ancient Coin Podcast with Aaron Burke.